Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to this uh, quick video lecture, mini lecture by Studium Generale, in which I will try to answer the question, why is it that people become so upset when we discuss the economic effects of the current lockdowns that are in place in various uh, countries? Why is that so? Well, I will explain this um, based on research performed in my group and in other groups worldwide into taboo trade-offs. Now, what is a taboo trade-off? Let me explain that moral psychologists have made a distinction long time already between conventional trade-offs, tragic trade-offs, and taboo trade-offs. The first of these, so conventional trade-offs, is the type of trade-off we make every day. You know, when you buy a new car, well, that's obviously not something we do every day, but when we buy something in a supermarket, we trade off value, the value for, for money, right? We trade off the price of a product and the quality of the product. And also when we buy a car, when we buy a home, when we buy consumer goods, we do this very regularly. Trade-offs are at the core of decision-making, no problem. That's conventional trade-offs. Then there are tragic trade-offs. This, that is a trade-off between what psychologists call two sacred entities, such as the one, a good example is here, the trade-off faced currently by health professionals who have to choose, in some cases, which corona-infected patient to assist and which patient not to, which patient to allow into an IC unit, which patient not to. Obviously, this triage, that's how it's called, may become inevitable, and it's becoming inevitable in many hospitals, given the acute scarcity of means, like intensive care beds, respiratory devices. And the name says it all, this type of trade-off, a tragic trade-off, carries enormous emotional tolls for the decision maker. But at least we know that health professionals feel that society will not wag a finger at them, will, will, will not condemn them, for making these kind of trade-offs, these kind of life and death calls. Now that is very different for the third type of trade-off. Uh, trade so we had conventional trade-offs, tragic trade-offs, but now we also have taboo trade-offs. A taboo trade-off involves a sacred entity on the one hand and a so-called secular entity or non-sacred entity on the other hand. And although in normal situations, Taboo trade-offs are very rare. A particularly salient one is surfacing in the current corona crisis. The situation which we're now facing is one where many societies are in full or almost complete lockdown. And obviously this carries enormous economic costs. People losing their jobs, schools being closed, children um, you know, not being fully educated and some of them even having an unsafe situation at home. And this then obviously begs the question, how much economic loss, how much other losses is a society willing to accept in an attempt to limit the loss of life caused by Corona? And this is then where the taboo comes in. Now, ultimately, the above stated question, the question which I raised earlier, the question, how much loss are we willing to accept as a society implies that a human life is compared with and even traded against an amount of money. And a wealth of studies have shown that people find the mere idea of contemplating such a trade-off as morally apprehensible. Now, Governor Cuomo of the state of New York in the United States who has, by the way, fantastic press um, conferences on a daily basis. He's one of them. He finds the trade-off to be morally apprehensible. President Trump of the United States is clearly not one of them. Now, when Trump last week, 10 days ago, suggested that the cure, lockdown, economic standstill, cannot be worse than the problem, people dying from corona, Cuomo responded and he said, if you ask the American people to choose between public health and the economy, then it's no contest. No contest. No American is going to say, accelerate the economy at the cost of a human life, because no American is going to say how much a life is worth. 
Now, our research shows that within society, there is actually a great variety in people's willingness to accept a taboo trade-off. For many people, like Cuomo, such a trade-off is indeed taboo. They argue that you simply cannot put a dollar or euro amount on a human life and that all must be done to save a life. Many others, however, argue that in a world of scarce resources, like ours, trade-offs simply have to be made even when they are morally uncomfortable. And those people say that we cannot, as society, pay billions of dollars or euros for every single life saved. We cannot allow our entire economy to collapse in the process. Now, in fact, it is interesting to note that most Western societies, including the Dutch, have procedures in place to make such trade-offs between lives and economy without much of the public knowing about them. Healthcare policies are routinely based on the notion of the monetary value of a so-called quality-adjusted life year. This value, which typically ranges in the tens of thousands of dollars or euros per healthy year of human life saved, has a long history in helping governments assess the cost-effectiveness of policies in domains as diverse as healthcare, traffic safety, climate change. Now, when the inevitable moment comes where governments need to make this taboo trade-off, society's acceptance will depend a lot on how it will be communicated. One classical approach suggested in the moral psychology literature is to reframe the taboo trade-off into a tragic trade-off. In this case, this could be done, for example, by expressing economic costs, not in terms of a decrease in gross domestic product or in the loss in market value of big firms. No, we need to express it in terms of the real pain an economic downturn inflicts on households and children, especially those with limited means. Another approach is to try and avoid the trade of altogether, for example, by explaining that a healthy economy is needed to sustain the healthcare system that is able to effectively deal with this and future pandemics. We can only ask ourselves the question um, how to deal with a pandemic if we, have, if we have the means in place. And for those means, we need a strong economy. Now, let me be clear. This is not a matter of clever or even cynical politics and spinning, no. In my view, based on solid research, Ultimately, society needs to be informed about the terrible choices that could lie ahead in a time like this. Being open about the trade-offs these decisions imply will, in my view, help us weather this and future storms. Thank you.